Welcome to Mojo Plays, and today we're looking at Nintendo sequels that surpassed the quality of their great predecessors. We're only including direct sequels to first installments, either in number or story chronology. <laughs> But before we get into it, we publish new content all week long. So be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. Donkey Kong Country 2, Diddy's Kong Quest. Rare and Nintendo breathed new life into the Donkey Kong series with 1994's Country. However, everything that delighted players about it was expanded upon in the sequel. It followed sidekick Diddy attempting to free DK from King K. Rule. Along for the ride was new character Dixie, whose ponytail glide made platforming through tough sections a bit more manageable and undeniably fun. Those digitized sprites were a bit crisper and the level design a bit more extensive, featuring a charming pirate aesthetic. Plus, composer David Weiss somehow managed to outdo himself, turning in a soundtrack we still love to listen to today. A special mention should also be made for 2014's Tropical Freeze, as developer Retro indisputably gave players a fantastic follow-up to their revival of the series. Mario Party 2 <laughs> There are still a lot of players who consider Mario Party 2 to be the strongest entry, and we honestly find that hard to argue against. Everything about it was a step up from the first, and not just because it didn't have mini games that left blisters on your hands. In general, the mini games were stronger. <laughs> And while there were fewer boards, those like Horror Land and Space Land had a lot more personality than those found in the first, as well as a bit more strategy when it came to reaching those coveted stars and screwing over your opponents. The Mario Party series built a legacy of ruining friendships. The second game upholds that while remaining an addictive party game. Splatoon 2. The first Splatoon was a surprise hit considering it launched on the doomed Wii U. Thankfully, it was able to find a much larger following on Switch, where the original was mostly multiplayer focused with a fairly bare bones single player mode, Splatoon 2 featured a more in-depth story, meaning its levels were far more dynamic. Of course, the real draw were improvements to online matches, including great new weapons and maps. Plus, with a larger audience, it made each and every Splatfest feel that much more monumental. There were still some matchmaking issues, and being forced to use the non-traditional Switch Online app to communicate with your teammates was still a pain. Still, everything else was a step in the right direction. Pikmin 2. There was a lot of wonder and charm packed into Pikmin, but there's a little bit more in its sequel. It follows Alamar returning to the planet of the little critters in search of treasure to help his floundering company. It did everything a good sequel should do. It naturally introduced new Pikmin. The purple ones could lift immense weight, while the white ones were faster, immune to poison, and could find hidden treasure. They worked wonders with new puzzles and obstacles, as did dual protagonist Louie, as that allowed you to split your group and tackle two objectives at once. Additionally, the sequel was generally long longer and did away with the 30 day time limit so we could explore to our heart's content. <laughs> Super Mario Galaxy 2.
To be fair, the quality difference here is so minor, it's almost non-existent. But there are a few small features we believe gives Galaxy 2 the edge. While the story wasn't quite as strong as the first, everything else was a genuine delight. The use of an overworld map made for a more streamlined experience, letting you find your levels more quickly than in Rosalina's space station. Every level was packed with imaginative designs and mechanics, especially with newly introduced power-ups, the rock mushroom, and the cloud flower. That's not to mention the inclusion of Yoshi, who controlled like a dream and came with his own power-ups. Even the most frustrating challenges are pristinely crafted. Pokemon Gold and Silver. These days, it's expected that a new generation of Pokemon will bring new creatures to capture, but in 1999, it blew our tiny minds. There were 100 new monsters to track down, collect, and battle with in Gold and Silver, many of which had fantastic designs. There were also lots of smaller changes, like an internal clock, that added just enough new to be different. There were also tantalizing mysteries, like the existence of Unknown, and a story that was a bit grander in comparison. And upon completion, players were pleasantly surprised to unlock the previous game's region, albeit a smaller version, which culminated in a surprise fight against the trainer they had previously controlled. Mario Kart 64. With the option for up to four players, the Nintendo 64 quickly became known for its multiplayer action. And even more proficient at ruining friendships than Mario Party is Mario Kart. The second game in the series is a bona fide classic, and a supreme step up from the original on the Super Nintendo. This was true at launch, admittedly thanks to the jump from 2D to 3D, but the transition is also what made MK64 age better than its predecessor. Gameplay is much faster, controls are much smoother, and both the race tracks and battle maps are far more comprehensive. It's still considered an excellent racer, and a multiplayer titan of the era. I'm a Luigi, number one. Metroid Dread. In 2002's Metroid Fusion, Samus put an end to the X parasites, able to replicate the DNA of any other creature they come into contact with. Except, she didn't get all of them. Dread is a direct continuation of this storyline, following Samus as she braves the planet ZDR to finish the mission. Since there's nearly 20 years between the two games, advancements in graphics and gameplay were obviously huge. However, the plot was also a bit stronger. The Galactic Federation attempted to solve the problem by sending the Emmy, literal killing machines that became corrupted. With a group of them, as opposed to Fusion's lone pursuer, SAX, encounters with each of them grew more intense, providing a tough but satisfying experience in taking them all down. Super Smash Brothers Melee. The original Super Smash Brothers was such a novel concept, taking Nintendo's biggest characters and pitting them against each other in a unique fighter. Melee, on the other hand, is such an improvement that there are legions of fans who still prefer playing it, despite several other games having been released. Hey. 
the expanded roster brought welcome inclusions like Bowser, Zelda, and the introduction to Fire Emblem for most of us through Marth and Roy. Controls were much smoother and quickly paced, making the first look cumbersome by comparison. Additionally, every fighter was given an additional special attack, and there were a ton of new modes to sink your teeth into. Ooh, yeah. Ooh. Paper Mario, The Thousand Year Door. Paper Mario began a beloved subseries for Nintendo's mascot, with plenty of humor, a lovely art style, and simple but fun mechanics. The Thousand Year Door is not only considered better than the original, but the best in the series by most. The setup is familiar, with Mario trying to rescue Peach from a new group, aliens known as the x Knots. But its characters, from new additions like Koops the Koopa and Vivian the Shadow Siren, as well as staples like Bowser, elevate everything around them. The paper aesthetic also played a bigger role, with Mario able to transform his body to accomplish different tasks. While future games would change a bit too much, The Thousand Year Door is a pitch-perfect RPG. What's your favorite direct sequel to a Nintendo classic? Personally, I would have loved to put Majora's Mask on here, but I feel like I'm in the minority there. Share your thoughts in the comments, and be sure to subscribe to Mojo Plays for more great gaming videos every day. Hmm.